On November 12, 1944, Royal Air Force Lancaster bombers attacked the German battleship Tirpitz as it looked for shelter deep in a Norwegian fjord. Massive 12,000-pound tallboy bombs smashed the pride of the German Navy. However, it would take over three years and more than 20 raids by the Royal Air Force and Navy to sink the Tirpitz. American and British naval planners devoted thousands of men as well as hundreds of warships and aircraft to the destruction of Germany's sole remaining battleship. Navy also employed midget submarines, known as X-Craft, in one of their most audacious raids against the Tirpitz. In 1943, two of these X-Craft penetrated the defenses surrounding the Tirpitz and laid several tons of high explosives beneath it. The battleship was crippled for more than six months, allowing a reprieve for Allied shipping in the Atlantic and the Arctic Oceans, but it wasn't until a year later that the Tirpitz was finally put to rest. Although the Tirpitz served Hitler's war machine and was considered a major threat, it never sank an Allied ship. The Treaty of Versailles, which ended World War I, severely limited Germany's armed forces. The Navy was not allowed to have either battleships or submarines. After Hitler's rise as part of a German rearmament in 1936, he challenged the British Royal Navy with an ambitious plan to build up the Kriegsmarine. This included the construction of two massive battleships, the Bismarck and the Tirpitz. Known as Plan Z, the new fleet was to be in service by 1944, the year that Hitler planned to declare war in Europe. However, his ambition could not wait. In 1939, he invaded Poland, and World War II began. Fortunately for Hitler, both the Bismarck and the Tirpitz had already been launched. On April 1st, 1939, the daughter of Grand Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz christened it. The Tirpitz was almost a sixth of a mile long and was armed with eight 15-inch guns. It weighed over 50,000 tons but was still capable of a speed of 30 knots with a range of over 8,000 miles. The Tirpitz spent the next year being fitted out at the port of Wilhelmshaven on the North Sea coast. On the evening of October 8, 1940, 19 RAF Hampton bombers attacked the Tirpitz with armor-piercing bombs. All missed their target. On January 25, 1941, the Tirpitz was commissioned. It began sea trials in the sheltered waters of the Baltic Sea for several months. In May 1941, its sister ship, the Bismarck, was finally ready for action and set sail for the Atlantic. On the 24th, the Royal Navy's home fleet attacked it. 
In a running battle over the next three days, the Bismarck was pummeled to destruction by gunfire and torpedoes. Hitler was dismayed by the loss of his finest battleship and ordered that no more capital ships venture into the Atlantic. He had other, greater plans, the largest land invasion ever. In June 1941, Hitler attacked the Soviet Union. Within weeks, the Germans smashed the Red Army on every front and the panzers plunged deeper into the Russian heartland. With the Red Army's retreat, Prime Minister Winston Churchill was determined to assist the Soviet Union with weapons and raw materials. The first of Churchill's Arctic convoys sailed on August 21st from Iceland to northern Russia. A second followed a month later with more convoys in each succeeding month. During the summer months the convoys could steer clear of Norway's north coast and the Germans did little to stop them. But as winter approached, growing pack ice forced them closer to Nazi-occupied territory. The weather and growing darkness of winter made any attacks increasingly difficult for aircraft and U-boats. During the first six months of operations, the Arctic convoys carried 120,000 tons of supplies to the Soviet Union, including 600 tanks, 800 aircraft, and 1,400 military vehicles. Up until the end of 1941, all 55 ships of the first six convoys reached Murmansk safely. Hitler became convinced that the British were planning to invade Norway to protect the convoy routes. He believed that the fate of the war will be decided in Norway. By that time, the Tirpitz was also fully operational, so he decided to concentrate the surface forces of the Kriegsmarine in Norway. On January 13, 1942, the Tirpitz passed through the Kiel Canal from the Baltic to the North Sea. It eluded British reconnaissance aircraft and sailed northward. The largest battleship in European waters was now on the loose. On January 16, 1942, the Tirpitz arrived at a Norwegian fjord near Trondheim. The approaches to the fjord were protected by German coastal batteries. Anti-aircraft guns were installed around the battleship to protect against air attacks. The Allies' Arctic convoys were now under the threat of German surface raiders. These included not only the mighty Tirpitz, but the pocket battleships Lutzow and Admiral Scheer and the heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper. The Luftwaffe was also heavily reinforced. Some 250 aircraft were based around the North Cape, the northernmost part of Norway, and were ready to strike at the Arctic convoys. The Tirpitz became the main concern for the Allied navies and the European theater of operations. Considerable resources were committed to contain it to its Norwegian boundaries. To the Germans, the Tirpitz was the queen of the north. To Churchill, it became an obsession. It was the beast, and one that had to be destroyed. On the night of January 30th, 1942, nine Halifax and seven Stirling bombers took off from Scotland to attack the beast at Trondheim. However, due to poor weather conditions and severe icing, the bombers failed to find their target. They returned to base without having dropped a bomb. On March 1st, the convoy PQ-12 sailed from Iceland, bound for Murmansk. At the same time, convoy QP-8 left Murmansk on the return trip with a total of 31 merchant ships. 